Well, Ant-Man is back, and this time the whole family's with him as he goes super micro in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. So how is this third entry in the Bugman saga? Scott Lang and Hope Van Dyne, along with Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne, explore the Quantum Realm, where they interact with strange creatures and embark on an adventure that goes beyond the limits of what they thought was possible. Paul Rudd returns, and honestly, he's one of my favorite characters in the MCU thanks to the witty humor that Rudd provides. He's just the right amount of snark for me, which makes him funny, but then he's also very endearing and comes across as an everyman, someone that's at least in parts relatable. Evangeline Lilly, Michael Douglas, and Michelle Pfeiffer, they reprise the roles, and in a casting redo, we have Catherine Newton playing Cassie, Scott Lang's daughter. Now, all of them are good, even though through a lot of it, Michael Douglas takes a pretty large backseat to just about everything. He's got his moments, but for the most part, when it's focused on the incredible shrinking family, Michelle Pfeiffer and Catherine Newton, they play the prominent roles, outside of Rudd. And then we've got the powerhouse standout with Jonathan Majors, playing Kang the Conqueror. Now, he's the story's antagonist, and Majors just steals every scene. He has this style about him that makes his line delivery feel like he's weighing the consequences of every word, that he doesn't want to waste them and wants them to be the proper choice each time. I mean, it's powerful and commanding because of the patience at which he speaks. There's this control there that shows dominance and power, and both of those traits emanate from the character. He has a line that he says to Scott Lang that is just jaw-dropping at how sinister and powerful it is. Now, I'm not going to quote it for you, but it has to do with fighting and the circularity of time. And circling back to Paul Rudd for a minute, his portrayal of Scott Lang, it feels different than in previous outings. He's not as sarcastic and witty as he's been in other films as Ant-Man. Now, maybe that shows a maturity on the part of the character, but in other instances throughout the film, there are attempts at humor. It just doesn't land. And that's not to say that none of it's funny, because there are multiple times that made me chuckle or smirk at what he was saying in his delivery, but there were also a lot of areas that made me cringe more than anything. I think it comes down more to the writing than to Rudd's performance. I mean, he was working with what he had, and it just wasn't as clever as it has been. Now, we've heard a lot of stories over the last couple of years about how Marvel has really been pushing VFX artists just to the brink with ridiculous timelines and demands. And while the CGI for this isn't flawless, so much of it is excellent looking, making the quantum realm truly look like a multifaceted universe that's rich with diversity and creativity. Now, there are definitely times when the settings look rather fake or just maybe a little too computer generated, but on the whole, the visuals were enveloping and I didn't notice any glaring flaws or shortcomings. I also really enjoyed all that we get to see within the realm. There are so many new creatures and sites that we get to witness. And while almost none of them get background or development, they are still awesome to watch as this new universe is unveiled for us. As far as the story goes, this is a bit choppy and also a bit heavy with the exposition. Now, some of that is needed to fill in details about key areas within the plot, but it's curious that some of the scenes they just couldn't work without narration because what was going on in them was generic and really could have meant anything. And sometimes the characters hold back on information, choosing to keep secrets, which only leads to more problems. But more aggravating is the fact that certain aspects are coyly held back for so much of the narrative, trying to extend the intrigue or the mystery for the audience. But it wasn't really building suspense for me. It was just making me wish that they'd hurry the story along to get to the point. Now, I do like the arc about family and how truth and trust are interwoven through that. This is executed well, and it's impactful in the way that it's delivered thanks to the emotional weight of having the entire family travel to the quantum realm together. And then on that note, when this happens, it has a very Jumanji feel to it. Now, I didn't mind, but that's what instantly came into my head when the action started happening. For Kang's story arc, I'm enjoying what we've got, but there's so much more to dive into. And because Marvel has unveiled the next massive amount of movies and shows, we know that this story isn't nearly complete, and it's going to lead to something huge in the future, kind of like Thanos' storyline did. Now, there is a character that is briefly shown in the trailer, and he's called MODOK. And I'm not sure if the intended reaction was laughing, but in the showing I was at, the audience erupted into laughter multiple times throughout the movie each time the character came on screen. I mean, it's just a ridiculous looking design. And although it does resemble some of the animated or even the comic illustrations that I've seen, it doesn't take away from the silliness. And unfortunately, the design worked to break any tension or even ferocity that may have been trying to be built. It was way too hard to take Modot seriously. So any danger that could have come from him was instantly forgotten in place of Chuckles. Something that was a glaring omission in this film that the other two Ant-Man movies had was Louise. 
That dude is a gem within the MCU. And to not have him give us a rundown of something in his signature ADHD comedic style, I think it's almost criminal. Especially given the fact that part of the opening sequence in this movie, Scott Lang is walking down the sidewalk towards the camera as a voiceover narration takes place, kind of catching us up with what's happened, but also getting some insight into Scott's life since we last saw him. And this would have been the perfect opportunity to insert Luis. Nope, the dude's just nowhere to be found. If you're looking for action, there is plenty of it. And while a lot of the editing is done with quick cuts, there's still a good level of excitement thanks to so much carnage happening all at once. And when there are battles, they're not just tiny little skirmishes, but instead full-scale attacks where things are exploding and people are fighting and dying just all over the place. Now, thankfully, there are at least two huge battle scenes, and then we get the climactic fight, Then that's pretty epic, too. It's a grand-scale warfare with just a ton of moving parts, so our attention is moved back and forth until the action gradually converges into one huge piece. And for the final battle, there is a plot convenience of sorts that helps to end the battle faster than I would have liked, but then luckily, there's still more fighting that takes place, just on a smaller and more personal scale. So I think overall, if you're a Marvel or a superhero movie fan, you're going to get a lot of enjoyment out of this. The sci-fi aspect is rich with detail, taking us to wildly new worlds with all kinds of bright and unique sights and species. While the story isn't as compelling as it could be, thanks in part to some choppiness of the narrative, the overall arcs are engaging, and this really sets up a villain who's a powerful threat. This outing has less humor than its predecessors, but still maintains some charm through its wit. Now, I had fun with this for what it is, and while it may not be wholly memorable, it's also not the most forgettable movie in the MCU. And I don't know if that is a glowing recommendation or not, but it's still fun enough to see in the theater with your friends or family. Also, there's a mid-credit scene and a post-credit scene, and both are spectacular, and it should get you excited for what's to come next. There's no sex, very brief nudity, some profanity, and then a ton of violence. I give Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania three out of five couches. So who's your favorite character in the MCU? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.